Before we hit the road on today's discussion, I want to express our sincere gratitude to our sponsors. Without their support, this podcast wouldn't be possible. So a big shout out and thank you to Performance Food Group, to C.H. Robinson, to the PepsiCo Foundation, and to the Knorr Brimps Global Cares Foundation. Without your support, this couldn't be possible. So buckle up and get ready for an insightful journey into all things next-gen trucking, your road to the future. Hey, this is Lindsay Trent with Next Gen Talks. Today, I have a guest. His name is Hayden Watkins. And Hayden is a broker at 19 years old. He decided at a young age, he wanted to go right into the industry and forgo college and really start working on a, a career. Um, and so Hayden, we are really excited to have you today to hear about your career path, um, and what you do. Glad to be here. <laughs> so tell me like, what age were you when you're like, you know what, I want to be in the trucking industry. Um, I started very young. I was first, um, like during school, I guess, after school, I was, uh, around like 14. So in the beginning of freshman year, maybe the end of like eighth grade, uh, middle school um, is when I kind of started working in like a warehouse environment. Um, so it would be anything from, you know, like painting lines on the floor uh, or painting like dock um, uh, plates or whatever uh, to, you know, even driving a forklift and loading trucks myself um, is kind of when I started. And that's, uh, I guess, where I started it would have been like warehousing. So did you at that time think, you know what, I, I might want to do this for my entire career or I might want to just start, you know, right after high school doing that? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. What made you want to get into trucking? Um, it was it, without a doubt my dad, um, seeing him being involved in it and then, um, like from an early age, he was always on the phone and I always kind of wondered, like, what is it that you do? Um, he really was never involved in like the brokerage per se or transportation. Uh, for him, it was more like warehousing and uh, like sales, I guess, from a warehousing perspective. Um, so like it doesn't really relate to transportation that much. Um, but just seeing that and and um seeing like what he is going through like uh, always on the phone or always solving a problem is kind of what uh i guess spiked my interest and so you're a broker now right mm -hmm. yes okay what is a broker what does a broker do <laughs> um there is no real fine line um really we're just a middleman between any i guess business interaction or uh, business agreement i guess um, so what we do is we profit off of, um, connecting two entities basically, or connecting a vendor to supplier or, um, you know, supplier to purchaser or whatever the case is, um, really a broker or a brokerage, um, strives to make money off any, any transaction. So really you're helping to get um a driver with a load mm -hmm. um well you're helping to connect them to somebody that needs that load moved right right yeah so we would we connect the service uh or the service providers to the or the needs like whoever needs the service provided okay yeah. so tell me like in the last day or two what are some loads that you that you and what do you call it like uh, right now um what i'm actually working on there's some stuff in kansas city um and this would be yeah, drayage is what it would fall under over, you know? um and so what that is that's uh usually product from overseas for this instance this product came from ningbo china um it was imported through uh, Los Angeles port from Los Angeles port. It was railed uh, via intermodal to Kansas City, Kansas, uh, to a terminal there in which we will pick it up from there on a uh, 
um, a chassis with a you know power unit, um, and then we will deliver that container to the final delivery or the customer, um, and then really that's about it. We'll return the empty container once once it's been offloaded. But that's uh, that's pretty much inland transportation is what that would be. Okay, so you um, now the product was already getting from China to Kansas City. But your right. role was to get it to Kansas City to its final destination. Right. And so from Kansas City, this specific, uh, I guess, business, we handle 10 containers a month uh, for this like specific, um, I guess, project. Um, and those go to Lamar, Missouri from there. Um, and so we would bring it from Kansas City, Kansas to Lamar, Missouri, and then return the empty containers back to uh Kansas City. Okay. And so all over the country in any given mm -hmm. day, you're yes. making deals to yep. get product from one place to another. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you basically are a matchmaker. You're matching a driver and a load or you're like, you know, you're what you're, you're matching a load to a driver basically. Right. right? Yep. <laughs> okay. And yeah. what do you like about your job? um everything it's it's very different every day so like one day i'll be dealing with that out of kansas city and then uh tomorrow i'll be dealing with something that comes out of my facility here in plainfield or uh, whatever the case it's just always solving a new problem for a uh for a customer which in turn helps them out um and it's cool that you get the profit off helping a customer or helping somebody out yeah. And so you have a like a list of customers that are that you do business with a lot or are you mm -hmm. trying to get new business or both? Both. Um, so what, with with what we are, Hanzo Logistics, um, we're, we're basically a 4PL. So um, the warehousing division and then our like asset trucks. So we own our own equipment as well. That was. Um, really established almost 15 years ago, whereas the brokerage uh, was established around five years ago, but um, there really was nothing, I guess, moving through it. Um, and so that's kind of where we were brought on uh, to kind of advance the brokerage and uh, expand. Um, I, I love everything about it, really. It's it's so different. There's never a day where, where you're doing something that you did yesterday, and it's always... Uh, it's a pretty lenient environment as well. So somebody, somebody that wants to be successful um, as a mm -hmm. broker, say I'm, you know, I'm 16, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. What do you think the qualifications I need to have to be successful at being a broker? Uh, good communication skills is very, very important. That's, that's probably the most important uh, piece of this business is, is just communicating because you're always either on the phone with somebody or, uh, discussing a solution really. And it's um, being able to analyze problems and then quickly come up with a solution to that problem. Um, that's the whole name of the game. So if you can do those those three things, really that's, that's pretty much all you need. Everything else can be either taught or, um, you know, can be, I guess, helped by somebody else or somebody else can help with it. Just so, because in this industry, there's so much experience, so. Yeah. So what made you decide to go right into your career? Like what, what was your deciding factor besides, like, I'm sure you have a lot of friends that decided to go to college. Um, mm -hmm. What made you decide, you know what, I'm just wanting to start my career. Really? That was, I, I don't know. I, I, I say I don't really have a choice or didn't really have a choice. Um, although I did. Um, but like once I started at, at 14, um, you know, and then come like sophomore, junior, senior year of high school, I'm, I'm only going to school like half of the day. And then the rest of the day I'm um, uh, was at the previous company where I was uh, in the brokerage there. Um, so so going from that, it kind of there really was never a, like a, another option. I mean, yeah, um, my dad really wanted me to play baseball in college. And that was um, kind of his goal just because he didn't. Um, and he thought he should have when he was in school. Um, but either way, he he had my back with with either decision. And so it was it kind of just 
played out this way. <laughs> yeah, because you got all this momentum moving forward, and it's yeah. almost like you would take a few steps back if you stopped. Exactly. And, yeah. To study and to go to school when you know exactly what you want to do. Right. I kind of felt ahead of everybody, not really, you know, necessarily ahead, but all my friends are, you know, in school. They're they're not really going to find a career for another four to five years or whatever the case. And that kind of um, just knowing that kind of felt like, oh, you know, I'd, I'd rather retire a little sooner so I can party later than party go. now. And <laughs> yeah, there you go. Start making money right away. Yeah. Investing that instead of getting student loans. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds like yeah. a, that sounds like a good deal to me. Um, <laughs> how, how did you get to go to school a half day? Did your school have something special where you could do work-based learning? Yeah. So um, I kind of was lucky. Um, they did something with schooling like around when I was in eighth grade where we were able to take certain uh, like courses in middle school to allow us to get high school credits. And I think they like maybe got rid of that or something. I don't know. Um, but if you had like enough credits, certain, um, you could do like a certain, uh, like we did work-based learning and, and we're like got OSHA certified in like a construction class before. Uh -huh. So that was soft, uh, maybe sophomore year or junior year. Um, and then once that was over, you had like enough, those were also college credits. So, um, if you had enough credits, you could do like a work-based learning, which was, um, you'd have like maybe two periods. So whatever you needed to fill was basically whatever you would take during the day. So and you then, basically have been getting paid since you were 14. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would, I, at 16, um, I, I think is when I like first started like on a salary um, like basis or pay. Wow. What is your advice to somebody who's 15 and maybe wants to explore. Maybe they've got mm -hmm. a warehouse somewhat nearby and they're like, hey, I would like to get a job and check this out. What would your mm -hmm. advice be? It, it would be absolutely go for it. There is anything um, or there, there are a million ways to, you know, be successful in any avenue that you choose, whether it is, you know, warehousing, transportation or anything in logistics or in any in industry. Um, but with logistics itself, it's um, it's easy to be creative because there's so many ways you can really, um, I guess, succeed or um, come up with a solution or, or a idea that you could sell to your customers that they find value in over, you know, another brokerage or another um, transportation or warehousing company. So that 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 alone just I would say um, it gives you, I guess leverage um you know if you wanted to start something in this industry versus somewhere else um i'm i'm, I'm not too familiar with anywhere else though i've only done this for the past four or five years so i'm young i don't know too much but what do you think i mean you're 19 um what yeah. attracts you to the trucking industry and being a broker the freedom really of um being able to go after you know any customer there is and be able to talk to anybody in the world anywhere whatever it is um just knowing that everything in the world was transported at one point like anything that was man-made was transported at one point and um to be able to contribute to that is very awesome it's a, a very cool like experience just knowing that you're contributing to that yeah so do you have any examples of something that you've that you've moved? Like, do you know the yeah. products? Yeah. What kind Absolutely. of things are you moving? Yeah. So um, we are a partner with DHL, um, one of their first like national um, motor carriers that they've, uh, I guess, partnered with for DHL Global Forwarding. Um, with them, there's a lot of, I guess, pharmaceuticals or high class pharmaceuticals. And then some of our other uh like uh, accounts or customers that we deal with, like Sunoco, Sunbrella, those are all pharmaceuticals. Um, and so a lot of like pharmaceuticals for COVID, um, like we've transported a lot of that, whether it be um, around the United States, we've done a lot to Mexico, to Canada. So um, 
like shoot, there was some um, of a high profile uh, drug or a pharmaceutical that was transported, which we uh, transport with helicopters that fly over the truck while it's uh, moving. And so it's very, it's like very secure. It's very uh, um, wow. high value. It's there's over $2 million worth of product in that one trailer. So um <laughs> It's, is there, like, are you arranging that helicopter right as well too? Like you have to arrange the security? No, we don't necessarily arrange that. Just the truck, just the truck itself. Um, I guess that would be, ew, I don't know who would arrange that, but it ain't us. Wow. That's <laughs> wild. That's wild. Sorry to whoever's paying for it. Cause that's expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you got to protect that $2 million, right. those assets. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Make sure they get where they need to be mm -hmm. um, in a safe manner. Um, so, I mean, that's got to feel good to know that you're getting the people the medicine that they need and yes. arranging to have it safely delivered to mm -hmm. where it needs to be. Yes. It's very, very, very awesome to be able to contribute to that. Mm -hmm. Tell me like an, like an average day, you wake up, you get to work. What's an average day for you like? Um, it's pretty... Really, it's smooth just because everything we do is all online, on the phone, um, writing something down. So we're never, you know, it's there's nothing ever physical or, you know, anything tiring other than mental. But um, a day to day, it's just come in the office um, around eight. Um, we basically field emails, make phone calls. Um, Really, I mean, yeah, it just the day to day operation is uh, communicating. That's that's basically mm -hmm. it. Just providing a solution. So yeah. and I always feel like being a broker is kind of an exciting job mm -hmm. um, because you're never doing the same thing over and over right. again. And you're you're like making things happen. You're making deals out there. Right. Right. Um, so it keeps you on your toes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And another cool thing about it is you really get to see like what you are contributing to because everything, you know, who you're picking up from, you know, who you're delivering to. So like, it's, if I'm delivering to somewhere like Eversana health sciences, I know that I'm picking up pharmaceuticals and I'm delivering to a either uh, somewhere that creates or manufactures or does something along the lines of something to do with whatever it is that I'm moving. But um, yeah, it, it's very interesting. Very, very cool. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm curious, uh, there's a lot of brokerage jobs out there, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so some people maybe want to do it right out of high school. Some people go to college and then become a broker. Yep. Um, and, and you just wanted to go for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why do you see your career path being, um, do you think that you want to do this forever or mm -hmm. are there some other opportunities you'd like to have, um, see it with your career? So with this, um, I, I kind of got lucked into, I guess, where I landed. Um, we have a really good infrastructure with um, with great people that, um, you know, have, uh, I guess, connected us in, in like a, just the most fortunate way. And so um, really there I, I do not plan on, you know, ever moving from Hanzo itself or the logistics industry uh, at all. Um, but. I mean, there will always be opportunity for other, you know, endeavors on my own uh, or on my own time as well, such as um, a couple of my buddies, actually, uh, one of my buddies who works here, went to school with, um, will be starting like a liquidation um, or something to do with liquidation here soon. Um, and so Hanzo, where they're letting us store some stuff pretty cheap and then, uh, you know, obviously we have the brokerage for transportation, so it kind of makes it easier to be able to I guess, operate something like that. But um, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll just see where it goes. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you could stay there for your entire career and continue to yeah. be a broker. And I'm assuming you make a salary and then you make commissions. I mean, mm -hmm. how, does that, yeah. how, does, how does that pay structure work? So, um, yeah, for, for this, it's um, I'm more of like in a management position here. So that would be uh, a salary plus commission. But again, any, any, um, really any position in a brokerage, you're looking at some form of either commission structure, 
uh, or just salary, no commission structure, depending on what it is, like more of a, a data entry or customer service is more of like a uh, salary alone uh, type of structure. And then you have uh, something like uh, an account manager or a carrier sales, uh, mm -hmm. which would be more of like a salary, like a lower salary, higher commission, or maybe a higher salary, lower commission. It just really depends on um, kind of what you negotiate. So it's it's very it's very open. Um, there's no really set terms or set guidelines to follow on on. Um, how to pay or or you know structuring it's just whatever works so that's that's what i mean by like when i said earlier kind of freedom feeling free and in, in what you do that's kind of um the structure i guess is we're very lenient in, in what we can set up so yeah and, and you so like getting a, an extra commission check right is what is mm -hmm. that feeling like you know you <laughs> get your weekly salary or your bi-weekly but then you get some extra checks and what is yeah. it like when you opened your first commission check when so i um i started at freedom which was my previous company um or where i started at tradition which was in the warehouse but freedom was when i started in the brokerage um and i more started as an intern and so i was um kind of lucky where I got like a deal kind of worked out where I was getting commission as an intern, whereas none of the other interns were, but that was more of uh, just because they knew they were bringing me on as an employee at some point. But um, the first commission check I ever got was uh, over double what my like check was for like two weeks and i was like oh my god wow you're like i'm hooked <laughs> yeah. well and it was uncapped too and that's the cool thing about like a brokerage is a lot of these places are going to be uncapped if if you can bring on a good book of business or if you're you know um inside sales if you're able to bring on business within a, like an account that's already there that's there's you know so much room for growth and um, it's, it's awesome. It's, that's, that's the coolest part right there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> being able to get, um, your normal check that you count on, yeah. so you budget, but then, Hey, you get this huge check out of the blue, uh, yeah. well, not out of the blue. I mean, you're working hard for it, but it incentivizes you to yes. um, yes. want to work hard and tell me like, what are some of the things that you've purchased? as a 19 year old, um, do you have a vehicle that you purchased yeah. or? <laughs> yeah, hold on one second. Uh, let me, yeah, I did. Kind of silly, but. Awesome, that's a pretty sweet <laughs> car. <laughs> it looks like it's fast. <laughs> yeah, that's the major reason I bought it there. Really? What kind yeah. of car is it? It's a Camaro, uh, like V8 Camaro 2021. It's it's nice. Every 19 year old needs a Camaro. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty sweet, right? Like yeah. I drive a minivan, so drive a Camaro while you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I agree with you there. That's uh, now I'm, I'm uh, done buying toys that I haven't really bought anything. I'm I just moved out not that long ago into an apartment. So Great. now the bills are starting to starting to kick in. Yeah, but that's good. I mean, do you live, do you have roommates? You live by yourself? I with my girlfriend. Okay. So yeah. you're like on the road to um, you know, being independent and yep. doing yeah. what you want to do every day when you wake up. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Compare that to some of your friends um that chose a different route um that would be that would be them in college basically in a dorm or or somewhere that uh, along that line <laughs> yeah did a lot of them have to get student loans to to do that more yeah uh, some yeah some of them did more of my friends um their parents are paying for it yeah. i went i went to new pal so i was um yeah actually it, it about half and half really yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, so yeah, going to college and kind of learning what they want to do besides you're already doing it and building right. up that, uh, you know, building up your net worth really. 
What? I had a couple, um, like my stepbrother and then a couple other buddies, they're, um, they kind of went the same route I did, except they did with um, like union. So um, my stepbrother is a pipe fitter for uh, Miller's Pipeline. And then um, my other buddy worked for Miller for a little bit and then is now, uh, um, like, I think he started his own epoxy flooring company. Okay. Um, so that's kind of, I mean, if it wasn't logistics, they did something similar, you know, going, getting to work. But it was either that, yeah, student loans or, yeah, some if somebody, type of school. If somebody, they're like, hey, I'm, I, I'm looking to do this. Would you just say, like, look up some logistics companies and walk to their front, you know, like, try to say, hey, can I get a job and apply for a job? I mean, how do, you, how do they get connected to a job like that, do you think? It depends. Um, for me, it was easy just because of my dad. But I would say, really, if you're looking to um, like become a broker for like a transportation company, I would say looking up um, like what your op- offers are, you know, whether it be um, – like in any position, what your like commission structure and pay structure would be, how you can negotiate it. Um, Other than that, I've always thought a good idea would be like starting a Landstar um, like kind of agency to where you, or, you know, some of those different agencies allow you to start um, your own like brokerage under those authorities where they handle all of like the back end paperwork and, uh, um, and they already have like the infrastructure. You just get like a percentage of um, of the business you bring on. And usually that's more of like only commission, no salary type of uh, environment. But um, I mean, both of them are a uh, good opportunity. It just depends on a how much work you want to put in, um, how much time you can put in, um, et cetera. Well, I think that's great advice. And I think that. Um, there's a lot of job openings for being a broker yeah. Yeah. and a lot of companies will train as well. Right. I mean, you got trained mm-hmm. to do what you're doing. Yep. And so looking for those types of opportunities and maybe saying, Hey, I want to get into business and sales and this is a great way to do it and earn good money while I'm doing it and have something different every day. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for being on Next Gen Talks today. I think a lot of young people are really going to be excited to hear about what you have to do. What would you tell an employer um, about hiring an 18 or 19 year old to and giving them a shot at doing what you do? I would say absolutely give them a shot. Just uh, and that's actually something I think a lot of um I guess a lot of companies that I'm like close to or, or have a, like a relationship with that I talk to about something like this would be um, that they do want to bring on more like youth. Um, obviously, they know that they need youth to carry on what's going on in this industry. So um, really, yeah, I, I, yeah, really. Yeah. Do it on the and let, let's see what happens. Um, and I love the idea of an internship, like in work. Yes. Maybe, yes. maybe find a 17 year old and, and give them a shot during the summer mm-hmm. or, you know, after school um, and see what they can do. I think that would be a very good place to start. Um, whether it be, you know, like seniors in high school or even, you know, kids in college who I, I, um, like especially during the summertime, because uh, when when we did that inter- internship program the uh, uh, the first time, it was maybe 15 to 20 um, people. And we had over 30 people that were interested to do it. We just couldn't have that many interns. So um, definitely something like that is a good opportunity to get to get young kids involved. Absolutely. Well, Hayden, thanks for being um, on the show today. And we wish you the most success in your career. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.